Hello everybody, this is Hybrid. And this is White Sheep. And this is our spoiler review. Uh, you know, we tried posting this earlier, but YouTube slapped some restrictions on us. Uh, apparently we're not able to film long videos of us talking anymore. You guys are probably so happy. Uh, you know, if you didn't see all the signs, we're going to give you 10 seconds to leave. Starting in 3, 2, 1, get out of here. So, streamlined edition of this review, uh, we're going to get right to it, really. Um, Hybrid, what was your favorite part of the entire movie? Well, I'd probably say my favorite part of the movie movie would be when Bruce Banner revealed his secret. Oh, yeah. But That's a good one. Of a whole, I'd say it's the end scene credits. Yep. The, with Thanos. The actual film, I would say that, that part with the Hulk, uh, you know, he's like, what's your secret? I'm all with it. That was... A really human moment, and more on that later. Uh, you know, just my favorite scene was personally the kind of three-way fight between Hulk, Captain America, and, or not Hulk, Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. That was really fun. A lot of Tony Stark's best lines, uh, you know, calling uh, Loki reindeer games and Shakespeare in the park. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> and then the Doth Mother Know You're Wearing Her Drapes line just made the theater just kind of erupt into laughter I couldn't hear anything uh, like any of the other lines for about a minute afterwards but you know it was a really good comedic balance in this movie I felt I mean it captured the comedy of Iron Man while having some of the seriousness of movies like Thor and it was you know, it was a good balance Joss Whedon did a good job yes um, he did good he did a great job uh, I think this was a perfect movie for him uh -huh. I thought the, the acting of the cast was great obviously uh -huh. um they're essentially veterans to these characters yeah. now, you could say. So I mean, you know, they, with, they love the characters, with the exception being, you know, Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye. That's one he's only played for a cameo role before. But um, you know, everyone else kind of, you know, and with also with the except notable exception of being Mark Ruffalo. Yes, um, as Eric, uh, not Eric Banner, uh, Bruce Banner. Much better. He did a much better job than Eric Banner. Go he was see very them. underestimated. Um, yeah, a lot of people didn't think he would do a good job, but he was he did a my favorite actor in the film. In the film he probably did, had the best acting performance. I mean personally the thing I'm impressed with is the fact that he was a human character. He was the most relatable character. I mean, because not a huge proportion of the human population are gonna be highly trained assassins, uh, you know, hundred year old super soldiers, billionaire genius playboy philanthropists or demigods so you know in some ways being a giant green rage science experiment is actually more realistic than being any of the others um but still the way it was portrayed was absolutely excellent ruffalo was just human and he was you know you could tell he was kind of insecure and he was dealing with a lot of stuff, and I think everyone will go through that. And that was one of the defining aspects of this movie to me. Yes. So, regarding the plot, at least, I'd say the enemies, obviously it's Loki, and then later on his army, that, uh, as they've called them, the which is the Shatari. And a lot of people were, are calling them the Ultimate Scrolls because that's what they're usually seemingly or, um, referred to seen as yeah. in the comics. But I'm just going to say this one time. They are not the Ultimate Scrolls. This yeah. has been cleared up in Ultimate Fantastic Four comics, so please don't come here commenting about how they're the Ultimate Scrolls and they didn't do that justice. They don't have to. They're not the Ultimate Scrolls. And also, I feel they couldn't have put any really general alien character without any special things into the film because they didn't do anything really special that would classify them as any different race. They didn't shapeshift. They were really just kind of drones, really. And... They really, they really um, seemingly betrayed them as that, as at the end, Iron Man ends up flying, uh, flying a nuke into the mothership. It seems, and after that, they just all kind of drop. Yeah, and that was kind of my thought. There was, you know, Star Wars one with the droid army just falling apart after the control ship exploded. But um, you know, that was. I mean, and we'll get. I'll talk more about plot convenience later, but. You know, that, which for me, was a big thing. Your favorite character was Hulk, though. 
Yes, um, one scene really kind of made that moment for me, and I'd say that was, actually no, two did. One, when him and Thor, Hulk and Thor, were both taking down one of the flying ships, or reptilian ships, the Leviathan. Yeah, the Leviathan. Was, that's what they've been called. But, yeah, they do that, and, you know, Thor is kind of exhaling in relief, I guess. And it, right there on the spot, Hulk just punches him, sends him yep. flying away. It was those moments. It's kind of physical comedy, and it yeah. is really enjoyable. And then also, another one is when Loki was saying, oh, I'm a god, blah, 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 you're beneath me. And then right, Hulk didn't even let him finish his sentence. He just picks him up and just starts throwing him around. Playing as my and, girlfriend called it, Loki Whack-A-Mole. <laughs> yeah, like, but, um, it was really funny, yet... I mean, it, was, it was a Hulk moment, and it was great. It was those moments that kind of, you know, introduced... It, it, it kind of took the edge off of the seriousness of the whole thing. Um, and I thought that was good. That was, you know, needed. And that was really what made it special. Was It was such a good balance of, you know, seriousness and, you know, silly stuff, basically. And that's another way that, you know, Joss Whedon did a really good job. I have to personally agree. Mark Ruffalo's portrayal of the Hulk was my favorite acting performance in the entire movie. Um, and any other, if he had not been there, I probably would have said Robert Downey Jr. But, you know, everyone, it was really strong casting overall. Everyone did well, right down to, you know, Stellan Skarsgård as Dr. Erickson. But, yes. um... Coulson, though. Hell, even the picture of Natalie Portman had a really strong acting performance. <laughs> um... Lulz. Yeah, but um, mm -hmm. but once again, profess my love for Joss Whedon and David Fe or Kevin Feige. Uh, they they just the complexity to which they have turned this Marvel Cinematic Universe into kind of a comic book continuous, uh, I guess. Yeah, continuity kind of really just you know they've kind of made it a universe of its own, and I really like that. Um, I would say. I have to give a shout out to Kobe Smulders as Maria Hill. Oh yeah, she even though really her really role good. wasn't that major, you could say she, she had a lot more screen she, time than I thought she would. Yeah, you can tell though that she put effort into it, yep. and that's important because you just don't want somebody who's like, "Oh, my role's not that big. I'm not gonna care about it. I'm not gonna try." It's not like that with her. Yep. She said in an interview she took this very seriously. She even got a, a trainer to make sure she knew how to fire a gun properly, stuff like that. And that's that's important, especially to the fans, because that really shows that they care. And I'm uh, I'm also really glad that they kind of portrayed her like Maria Hill in the comic. She was more serious, especially the one line that really summed that up. And this was not a TV spot if you haven't already seen it. Um, it's the, it's in the very beginning of the movie. They're, they're talking about evacuating the Shield base. She's like, evacuation may be futile, and Nick Fury comes back with until the day the world ends that will continue uh, acting like it intends to spin on and that's that kind of you know I guess not necessarily crassness to, per se but just the kind of more harshness the harsh like, kind of realism that Maria Hill is kind of defined by Kobe Smulders managed to capture that really really well alright if you had to say one negative thing about the movie hybrid what would you say? one? um it's, it's hard to find one. The yeah, but you know, white sheep will get into this earlier. It's a really fun movie, so you usually you would actually not usually, but most likely most likely you will unless you've seen it more than once, like white sheep. Yep. You'll probably <laughs> overlook a bunch of things. One that was really for me was how Black Widow seemed to react to the Hulk. Yeah, it was. A little weird. It was. It seemed really <clears throat> spontaneous how she would get really scared over him. Like, yes, if you were next to the Hulk, I bet you would probably crap your pants. But in the film, at least, this is a hard-trained assassin. She's yeah. probably seen a lot of things. Yet, and then yet, when she was in Calcutta to kind of recruit Banner to work with Shield, as the Cosmic Cube was emitting gamma radiation, and, and later an expert when Banner that. did go Hulk, yeah, on when the he did go Hulk, both times. Um, first time when Calcutta, when he was just Banner, he kind of messed with her by acting like he was angry, and her response to that was her pulling out a gun, aiming it at him. And she just seemed so scary. Like she wouldn't put the gun away for a, for, a, for a while. And then later on, when he was hulking out, after that, he she was just kind of in a corner, you could say, crying essentially. Sort of. It was. She it was. was it was. It was weird because 
like if they really didn't cover why that would happen yeah like what and that's that's a place where on. some more character development would be nice i mean and I, that's the only part where i agree with the reviews about character development but overall i feel like this movie was more about team development and character development and i like how they managed to develop you know the avengers as a team with all the dynamics happening and uh joss Whedon's really good at that from you know serenity and firefly to you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, everything he's really done, he's managed to make sure that people's relationships are more like, you know, actual people's relationships rather than just being, you know, oh, I'm going to have him say this to further the script. Uh, they actually had a human dynamic, and that's what I liked about it. But one negative thing that I would have to say is plot convenience. It happens with every movie, and I guess I should be happy that this movie was... It wasn't super, super convenient just for the sake of it. Um, now, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, sometimes to help further a movie along, along, you have to make something really convenient. And that, this was one of those movies where it didn't happen a lot, but it did happen. Uh, you know, the two things that I can think of off the top of my head are Eric Selvig introducing the failsafe uh, in the portal. That was kind of convenient. Uh... You know, it was kind of lucky that actually happened for them. Uh, just almost, you know, too lucky. But um, and then again, Hawkeye being able to fight right after being, you know, cognitively recalibrated, as Black Widow put it, after he was just hit on the head. Um, that's one of those things where it's not, you know, story breaking, but it's still one of those things that it kind of makes you go, "Huh, that was really easy." And you know, also the Chitari kind of shutting off after the mothership, you know blew up and made it seem like, you know, they were some kind of droid army. That was also really, really convenient. Um, but, you know, for the purposes of keeping the movie short, or, you know, just being convenient, that kind of helps to further it along. Any final thoughts? Yes, I thought that Hawkeye and Black Widow, a lot of people complained that they didn't have enough screen time, I guess, compared to the other characters, and I think they had appropriate screen time yeah. for the characters. I mean, Scarlett Johansson was on in almost every scene <laughs> I mean I know some of you fanboys really like your ScarJo but seriously she was there literally almost every scene yes and, and I'll, if I could think about it really she was there from the beginning of the movie to the very very end of the movie literally almost I mean she was there for every scene so yes. I can't see what you're saying but uh yeah people were complaining that I guess they didn't they didn't really give a somewhat backstory information on Hawkeye at least and I disagree I think if you actually listen to what the characters were saying throughout the film and their dialogue you would actually learn quite a bit yeah they, they do tell you as much as you need to know for the purposes of the movie whether they do a movie later or not you know we'll see yes and I guess kind of my last final thought would be well one it was a great movie kind of like a comic book fan slash I guess you could say fanboy stream come true yeah and as White she touched on, it's just a lot of fun. But it's really one thing ride. I kind of also didn't like was the way kind of Coulson went. He tried firing at Loki a somewhat new shield tech weapon that was based off of the destroyer armor. And Loki used one of his doppelganger tricks on him and ended up stabbing him in the back. And with that being said, they kind of used that to get the team together. But I felt it was really unnecessary. Like, I know Joe Sweden's really, Joe Sweden's really famous for killing off favorite characters yep, like but wash this just seemed kind of out of place for me and i mean maybe it's because i like colson but besides that still i, I felt it was just kind of well to know, me it was really you know that iron was, man took it hard to me it was supposed to kind of shock you and make you feel what they would feel as knowing agent colson because he's grown from literally i mean if you listen to interviews he's grown from just being a cameo to being a mainstream character and my final thought is that it was just so fun honestly Despite those little plot conveniences, I had a really good time going to see it twice. Uh, probably might go see it a third time. Who knows? And your final score for this movie would be? A9.75 out of 10. And the Mind Gem was in it as well, so I was happy. Thanks for watching this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And watch my other videos. Thanks. Bye.